Why do you think Tyler Perry is so good at making clutch shots? Oh, man. I don't know, but I, I wish I could, like, bottle it, reproduce it, and inject it in him in the first half. You know, I really don't think, I think, um, like, probably early in the game, there's this, I'm open, I'm supposed to make it, and maybe a, a little thought process there and thinking, or I'm so open, I'm going to make it. And then late in the game, it's like he's not thinking about if I'm going to make it, not going to make it as the A. I'm locked in just hooping, like he's not even thinking, like just go get it. You know, I, I that's the best I could come up with. Um, I just, um, <laughs> it's so funny, a friend text afterward and said, man, you're going to have to come up with something else because they're going to just start running two guys at Tyler at the end of games. He keeps doing that, and it's the truth. So hopefully we're not in that situation. Is there some truth to that? I mean, he's born in a position, teammates do everything, and he's trying to do things right, but then there's the game. I'm just playing. Yeah, just hooping. Just, just, I, 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 I firmly believe so. And, and so maybe we need to stretch that a little bit earlier for him and, and – figure out some things. Um, I, I, I see growth. I see growth and real pride. He was really, really ticked off about um, us not covering the under OB well on the end of regulation. The guy got the three in and he was eight to get, and got on his teammates. And it was good to see. And they took it. And it was really good to see because like, he's done some things that has earned him the right to be able to do that. And so that, that, that's some good growth. Is that the leadership thing starting to unwind a little bit? Yeah, yeah, and and it's 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 easier to lead when you're doing everything right, you know. When you're when you're the hardest worker, when you're the most focused, when you're the most competitive, you know, it's easier. Um, it doesn't mean you always do it right, but your peers respect it and they they receive it. Yeah, what's Quentin status? Um, well. Uh, we've given him eight weeks to recover, which would mean that he'd probably start getting after it when he would come back from Christmas. Maybe do some stuff before that, but not play until after we come back from Christmas break. The Villanova schedule had some weird results. So what do you see from them uh, based on what they have done? Well, you know, the, the Big Five is just different, right? I don't know if y'all watched any of those games. I, I told us, I was like, they don't call any fouls. It's like the referees, <laughs> the referees uh, know that if they make a, a bad call that people are going to show up at their doorstep or something. But um, they don't call anything in those games. So it, it's, it's crazy, you know, it's crazy. It's, and, and those kids are so, I mean, it is intense, right? And... Um, so you really can't judge them on there. I'm I'm looking at what they did in my in uh, the yeah Battlefield Atlantis, and that was a three game run there where they were really really good. And so um, we know they have tradition and you know a history of success and all that. They got really good players and um, you know excited to get a team like that into Bram. I know our fans are going to respond right. Like I've said all along, I want our fans to respond because. Kansas State is playing, not because of who we're playing against, but I know that's human nature and it's going to happen. So I'm excited to see how our guys uh, respond to this challenge. You know, we got um, didn't do too well against USC. I, I didn't think we, we faced that too well. And, and then we got better against Providence, and then Miami came and hit us, and I thought we responded better in the second half there. Now let's see if we can come on the first half against, you know, a really good team and, and you know, make this thing – you know, really, really competitive the whole game. Do you want the Big 12 and Big East to continue playing a challenge here? No. Not a fan of it? No. <coughs> Is there a reason? Flexibility, probably? Well, we play, um, we're going to move into 20 league games, right? And, uh, you know, and I mean, I, I just, I don't know that we have anything to gain from it. Aren't you a fan of maybe finding out more about your team though early on in the season? Yeah, I like to be in control of that though, <coughs> and not have somebody else tell me when we have to play and stuff like that. What is it about the one over that makes them so good? Mm. Well, first of all, really good players. Um, they have a culture, 
that um, was set by Jay Wright and uh, you know coach was a part of that two national championships and um, and he's he's doing doing a heck of a job it's hard to follow a legend right like nothing if if he was undefeated the last two years people would be saying it was Jay Wright's kids <laughs> you know he, he loses a game and he's not Jay Wright so he's in a, he's in a tough situation but man the way he gets his guys to play play together and um, that's a terrific staff. I, I, I know pretty much more, all those guys seen them on the road and stuff. You know, they're really high character people and they care about their players. And um, I think you can take, in programs like that, you can take any kid from any era in that era and then plug them in and they're, no they're going to know what to do, right? They're going to play the right way and, and those things. And, and so that's how you know that they've got a program that's, and they've got some so, uh, some core beliefs that they uh, they operate in. And when you put five guys out on the floor that can all dribble, pass, and shoot, and, uh, we played Dixon. I think he was a freshman, maybe a freshman or sophomore, um, in the NCAA tournament. And uh, man, you just see how much growth he's made since that time. He he's a weapon. He's hard to guard. And so it's it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a battle. Is the issue with him his ability to step out and shoot, or his strength, or all of the above? All of the above. He's he's a mismatch nightmare. Like you put a bigger guy on him, he can take him on the perimeter. He can shoot the three. He can put it on the floor. Some. He's a good passer. You put a smaller guy on him, he can gain position in the post, and you know, and and gain an angle. And uh, he doesn't have great lift, but he doesn't need it because. You know, he uses his hands and feet so well to gain position. And that butt, you know, like, I mean, he's it's a weapon, so. From your perspective, did they have a glue guy? They just seem to all kind of play their role pretty well. In that program, everyone's a glue guy, right? Like, it, when Brunson was there, right, he took charges, he guarded in the poles, I mean, dove on the floor for loose balls, that's just... Everything that you would consider glue guy, everyone on their team does. And that's what makes them so good. The, with the LSU game later in the suite, was that a game you put on the schedule to kind of reward the Louisiana guys on the roster? Or did you have something else in mind with that one? <laughs> uh, well, we wanted to be able, I, when I got the job, one of the things that I heard was our fans would like to have some good high major teams come to Bramlage, you know, and not just play at neutral sites. And so LSU was one of the teams. Uh, Coach McMahon had just gotten a job, and he was one of the guys who said, you know what, we need a good home game, and we'll go play a good road game. And both of our programs, you know, first-year coaches and and going to be in about the same area moving forward. And uh, with the, and so that that's why they won the schools that want to do that with us. And we like Louisiana kids. and. They have good food down there, and Co Coach Marco, you know, <laughs> so <laughs> he does the scheduling. So, <laughs> how has Will McNair responded in practice since not playing? Will was terrific. I, I, I didn't really, I wasn't really caring about how he's going to respond to these practices. I wanted to see how he responded on the bench, and he was terrific on the bench, and he took ownership, and I was very proud of that. And, uh, and so, um, it. it Excited, like as, as I'm seeing, we're seeing growth. Uh, thankful uh, that we was able to get the win. With, you know, I mean, you lose the game and then fans are mad. Why, why are you disciplining Will? You know, or you know, now they're mad at him because he did something. You know, so we was able to get the win and and he was able to learn a lesson and and hopefully all the other guys learn a lesson. We say, you know. Um, a smart person learns from their own mistake, but a wise person learns from other people's mistakes. And so we're hoping that the other guys on the team look and learn from other people's mistakes. Have you made a decision on his status for tomorrow? Will? Yeah. Oh, he's going to start tomorrow. Yeah. We have a question about Nate Juan for Gimme. What, is there anything you're waiting on specifically before he could be able to return to the court? Uh, his... Nothing's changed about his status. I, I told y'all going into this, I'm treating it like a season-ending injury, and uh, that's something different happens. And uh, we're, we're, I'm excited for him. He's going to graduate in uh, a few days, and so um, that's the next step in this process. 
for him and for us and uh, just going to keep loving and supporting him and um, you know and see see where things go from there guys excited for Louisiana? You even said Marco or the players. Like, uh... Well, we hadn't really thought past that, you know, past Villanova. You know, we got done with, you know, North Alabama and pushed it aside. Now it's focused on Villanova and we'll, we're excited for this, this game against Villanova and then we'll figure out what happens after that. After a couple of close games in overtime, if anyone's panicking about your team, just what would your message be to those people? <laughs> May, you know. um, there was a couple wins in overtime, right? Okay. That's, you know, I mean, I, I look and I see uh, who did Southern beat? Mississippi State. Yeah, Southern beat Mississippi State, you know, and uh, who? Wilmington. Wilmington beat Kentucky at Kentucky, right? Now, not they went to overtime. And Kentucky won, or Mississippi State won. They, these are teams that were ranked or are ranked, and um, they're losing by games. So that's um, it's hard to win. Teams are are really good. Uh, we coach kids that are 18 to 23 year old, and we never know what they're thinking and what they're gonna do. And and our guys are figuring out a way to win close games. And um, you know. Uh, if everybody wants a blowout and all that kind of, I mean, you know, that's, that we, we don't have that team right now. And I don't know there's a team that exists like, didn't Duke lose at home? Yes. Yeah. Georgia Tech, or no, Georgia Tech, at Georgia Tech. Yeah, lost, lost at Georgia Tech. Georgia Tech, I mean, it was like a 500 team. And I know Damon's doing a great job over there, and I, that's not, not, but like, you know what I mean? It's just, it is hard to win, and you never know from, day to day and and so I, w I don't want our fans to put expectations on our guys that they don't put on their own children right like did you make the bed this morning well the one morning they make the bed the next morning they don't did you put your toys up one day to put the toys up one day you know like that's what we're dealing with too and these are kids and and we're growing and um i've been a part of teams that peak too early and I, and i knew it and i was like oh crap we're too good right now you know, and um, I'm going to just tell you, we don't win the national championship if it wasn't for COVID. The two shutdowns, because there were, there were th three times that year in practice, I looked and went, ah, I don't think anybody in America could beat us right now. And right after that, we had some kind of COVID shutdown. And then we had to come and start cranking up again. And then it was another time, and I'm like, we're playing Texas at Texas. And I, they play terrific. And we are just unbelievable, like unbelievable. And I'm like, man, I don't know if anybody, nobody can beat us. But this was like January, right? And you're like, oh crap, right? It's too, and we have a shutdown. And then right before we play Villanova in the Sweet 16, we're at practice and we're getting after it. And I go, because we're making these great defensive plays and the ball is still going in the hole. And you're like, ooh, I don't know if anybody can beat us. And luckily, that was a sweet 16, and we had three more games to go, and we just kept getting better and better and better. And so you just want to peak at the right time. You know, that doesn't necessarily sit well with some fans who don't like the ebbs and flows and the ups and downs. It doesn't sit well with my mom, right? She says, I don't like these overtimes. <laughs> I asked Gene if I got paid for overtime. <laughs> he said no. So I'm like, all right, fellas, we got to stop the overtime. But, you know... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, <laughs> not getting paid for this. So, <laughs> but yeah, that's it's just the nature of sports and, and how we deal with it. And how do you control not peaking early? I mean, you're not trying to lose games. No, not trying to lose yeah. game, but not try. Um, you know, just keep getting a little bit better, and not, you know, like there there are like we 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 have a bunch of things on the board that we say we have to work on, and you just don't try and get really good at all of them right away. I mean, you could. You could do it all in the preseason and put all that stuff in and be so much more gelled and, you know, so much more together. Our fans are still remembering senior night, right? They're still remembering uh, Kentucky and Michigan State, right? That was 
30 something games into the season, right? With a bunch of guys who we'd had together since, you know, what, middle of October. And um, we don't have all of our players together right now. We've only been together a couple months and we're gonna get there. We're gonna get there. You, I think you tweeted about that, you know? Um, we're, we're gonna get there. And uh, I don't enjoy it either, but I enjoy seeing where we're going. You stayed after one of those COVID uh, breaks and scored about a million points. Yeah, we did. It was crazy. You know what's so funny about that is that Gonzaga played earlier that day, and they were on a COVID shutdown also, and then they scored like 98 points. And we as a staff were like, them jokers wasn't shut down. They were practicing, right? <laughs> now, we knew we were, sh- we, were, we were really shut down, right? And I think they were too. And we came out, we played young. We scored 104 points. Uh, played us. Uh, however that goes, right? We played K-State. We scored 104 points, and at halftime, Alvin Brooks and I are sitting there going, everybody in America thinks we weren't really shut down. <laughs> they think we were practicing the whole time. But, you know, the guys had fresh legs, and when you have fresh legs, you know, you shoot it better. And so. What have been your thoughts on fans in the student section of Bramlage so far this year, and what are you looking forward to in, you know, upcoming non-conference games? Yeah, um, the student section has been good but not great. Um, we sold, I think, over 8,000 ICAT passes, and I haven't seen close to 8,000 in there. I appreciate the ones who have been there, but um, you know, I say all the time we got the best student section in America, and uh, I don't think I've seen that yet this year. That's just being real honest. Love them, love every one of them, but that's just being real honest. Um, I, I'd like... Our season ticket holders appreciate, I know athletics appreciates the money, but I want to see their butts in the stands. Like, I, I hate cold weather, right? The thing I hate more than cold weather is an empty gym. And so I can put up with the cold weather if the gym is packed. And that, that's, that's I, 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 if we're not using the ticket, get it to somebody who will, you know, and be there. Our guys deserve it. Anything else for Coach? Favorite Pop-Tart player? Yes. Oh. <laughs> Like I cannot believe that the 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 brown sugar cinnamon <laughs> God that is terrible right It is the strawberry but without the um, icing right So I do it without the icing because it makes me feel like it's healthy. <laughs> All right I'm serious. The strawberry without the icing that that's the one. And then if you can toast it, oh man yes. Now I I don't have a toast up there so I just eat it but. Yeah, I think didn't you say something about those pop? Can you believe s'mores got ranked number one? No, that's bad. That's bad. I'm telling you, brown sugar cinnamon. No, oh, no. You and Austin Carpenter, y'all would agree. <laughs> frosted strawberries. Frosted. I, you know, sir, I agree with you with the frosted strawberry. I only don't eat, do that because I feel like I'm doing something healthy if I don't have the frosting on it. But I agree with you on the frosted strawberry. <laughs>